Okay, so here they are. Of course, we, we mentioned now, like, Tillemans was going to be one of the... Ooh, and already okay. the Marta. This yeah. is great news. Like, Tillemans was going to be the most popular deck this weekend, and Exosister just destroys it. Uh, against Sprite, uh, it's I somewhat think, uh, closer. Uh, yeah, I especially, especially because Christos, as you said, is playing a very standard deck list. Yeah. And I think this could give him an advantage playing against mm -hmm. this type of deck. I mean, uh, Exosisters, uh, as we said before, is playing multiple hand traps, but with the Marta alone, will be able to put up uh, the, the standard lineup for Exosisters. And uh, I think uh, Tier Elements was the um, most played deck at this event. Yeah. So overall, I think Jan uh, made uh, a good choice, especially because he's sitting on a very good record as for now. Yeah, and I mean, as you mentioned, Marta, just the best yeah. opening uh, for the deck. Uh, it gets things done real quickly. And uh, yeah, for uh, maybe some of you who are not too familiar with the deck, uh, essentially it is really good against tier elements because each of their monsters get an additional effect when a card is moved, we can say, from the graveyard. Uh, and we all know how much tier elements uh, is involved with that. But regardless, uh, we see one of the first end traps uh, from Christos. We mentioned he's playing multiple copies of them. Yeah, and here Jan responded with the Exosister packs. Yeah. Um, so basically we'll be able to put up another monster on the field because the Caspital uh, was uh, mm -hmm. negated by Effect Veiler, so he didn't have uh, to get the another monster on his hand. Yeah, it's uh, a really, really good card. Uh, of course, uh, multiple ways to play this deck, uh, and uh, I think Overall, uh, one of the more interesting cards to me is also the Carpe Diem, I would say. Yeah. Because uh, at some point uh, it reminds me of uh, Prohibition, of course, uh, which is a card that we haven't <laughs> seen in a while. But it gets to the point where you can uh, either choose to declare Nibiru, maybe, if you're really ahead, or even just uh, as a Mystic Mine out. It does so much for the deck. It's really cool, I think. And yeah, here we see the usual setup. I think we added that Returnia yep. to his end. Uh, and this is solid. And I mean, we mentioned it. Sometimes the deck can struggle. But when you open with Martha, it just gives you so much. And as you mentioned here, we already see one of the first Magnificas of the day. And uh, what I really like about Magnifica is also that uh, during other player's turn, you can detach one material and Basically, mm -hmm. you will XYZ some on uh, know, another Mikaelis and Magnifica becomes yeah. the material. So Magnifica, such a good card. And this is the opening that Jan wants to go for. Sets two. We know one of them is Returnia, but this already puts a lot of pressure on the Greek player. Let's see if he can fight back. Of course, enemy controller is actually quite nice. Yeah. Uh, so if he puts his hand on it, maybe we could see it being used Ooh. Ooh, and change of art. What a way to start this uh, round 10. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This was unexpected, for sure. Absolutely. And then, uh, now we have seen uh, Jan chaining uh, uh, Magnifica's effect. So he basically gets uh, uh, the Mikael is on the field. And uh, he prevented uh, Christos from taking the monster. Absolutely. And here we see the Mikaelis, of course. Uh, once again, uh, pretty much it gains the quick effect that you can target a card your opponent controls in your graveyard and banish it. But even the impermanence coming down from Christos. So all of these interruptions. But now we need something. Beaver could be really, really yeah. good. So maybe if he has a copy of the Nimble Beaver, we could see some really good action coming from the player, but it's actually starter, so can't quite complain about that one. Yeah, uh, he started things uh, very well. He mm -hmm. will try to come back uh, because Jan's field at the moment seems impressive. Yeah, but still. Still really good end uh, from uh, Christos. Uh, will try his best uh, to fight back and uh, of course, once again, uh, he's up against uh, one of the decks uh, maybe you don't prepare as yeah. well, I would say, as the others, but <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's taking too much time. So yeah. probably he knows what he's doing, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me, as we mentioned, he's one of those players who has been around for, I think, 10 plus A long years. Time. Uh, yeah. So 
Okay, so here already we see Jan stopping right there and deciding to flip uh, the Vedis. Yeah. yeah. So we knew about the Returnia, I think. Uh? Yeah. And so it, it should it be the other yeah, set. He has both. So this is a really yeah, strong this start. Is yeah. Yeah. You can see Crystal's not happy about this one. Uh, essentially, what this card does, as you can read here on the screen. You can pay 800 and then uh, pretty much pick an extra sister from your deck uh, plus another one uh, and just get them both uh, and it's, it's really strong. Obviously much better against the tier elements, I would say, because then uh, it becomes impossible yeah. for them to deal with yeah. the situation. But, but I think this is one of the main reasons why also extra sister deck won the YCS. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's 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 not easy to play against this deck. I mean, uh, it, the deck is prepared to play against uh, all the correct uh, deck format, and also on the side deck you also have mm -hmm. other cards, you know, to take advantage. And yeah, this is huge. Essentially, here Jan uh, can either banish uh, this blue, or he can go for an X Y Z, which is what I'm expecting, and then even banish it. Uh, so this is so so much uh, coming down from Jan. Yeah, and here he just wants to make sure because he has an enemy, right? Ooh, yeah. another response. He does, uh, so he drew all of these yeah. uh, responses and enemy controllers being chained. This actually is uh, really strong uh, yeah. from Christos because uh, he can take. Uh, yeah, of course he's gonna pay 800, but he's gonna take uh, the Mikaelis, uh, for example, if he wants, or he's gonna take uh, one of the other monsters if he already has a normal summon available. And then, uh, yeah, the thing is, uh, Exosister Returnia pretty much paid uh, the cost. But then, as I mentioned, uh, you can use one of the two effects. Uh. Makes sense. Now it's all on Christos, who had an incredible yeah. start. Uh, does he have another normal summon? It, he, he does. Yes, uh, carrot. So wow. this is actually great uh, from Christos. I, I think he drew what he really needed because it was very hard yeah. to come back. Absolutely. Yeah. He was able to force the Mikaelis, and then with the enemy control, he prevented also yeah. the Returnia from being activated. Yeah, honestly, I think uh, the start from Jan uh, would have been uh, too much for pretty much any of the usual opening from Sprite. Drawing all these one-offs uh, is giving Christos a chance, but still, this is not guaranteed to be over, especially because he's locked already under starter, so we can't see like a Zeus, for yeah. example. Uh, but yeah, he is considering his options. Uh, he also has to be careful because uh, Exosisters have an effect on the field at the moment. Uh, so once you deal with the Mikaelis, uh, the priority becomes dealing with the other Exosister monster in play. Which I think is the Alice at the moment, right? So Yeah. As you can see here. And yeah, here we see the Gigantic. Uh, he is not playing Swap Frogs, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, but we can still see him going uh, for a little bit of uh, uh, recurring play. The last card in this end. The problem is that when he goes for Smashers, uh, then you can use the effect of Alice. So it's, uh, it's a tough one, but here we see one of the tech cards of the weekend, uh, which is the Cap Shell. Honestly, I love the card. It's so yeah. cool. Even just the artwork is cool. It uh, it does so much. It's essentially an uh, Iperia on steroids. We can say. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool card. Yeah. And now it will get a card uh, from the cup shell, uh, which is nice because then you get it essentially back every turn with the elf. Yeah. Uh, it is an option, and then uh, it's just free cards. And who doesn't like free cards? And we have seen uh, players relying uh, this weekend either on Cup Shell or on the Wind Up Kitten, yep. which I think were very good introduction to the deck, mm -hmm. give consistency and also to deal with other uh, cool combos. Uh, now, ooh, he has the bell. Ooh, okay, Ghost Bell coming down to 
slow things for Christos, uh, who is now in a weird spot because he has to think whether he wants to use these measures and basically turn this into a top deck war. But if you don't, then uh, you pass back to the Mikaelis, uh, <sighs> which uh, I don't think it's something you want to do. Yeah, I don't think it makes sense not to do it. Right? Yeah, exactly. But instead, uh, Christos uh, uh, relies on the fact that this elf will activate his effect again. To be fair, the Mikaelis can target cards in Graveyard as well. So, for now, Jan will press forward. Uh, and here Jan will make uh, more pressure on Christos, mm -hmm. because with the packs he will uh, be able once again to go for another Magnifica if he really wants yeah. to. And this is already so much advanced. That's why, honestly, I don't think I'm a big fan of uh, not doing it right away. Yeah. Like, why would you not do it right away? Not exactly. Yeah, I mean... Like, they I get a search, uh, they still force it. Because, like, even if they just enter battle phase, they attack. Uh, and if you use elf, uh, then they banish whatever is in the graveyard. Uh, and you're still forced to use measures. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Not that... Maybe that decision was... A little tough, uh, but let's see. It seems like Christos is using it on the elf. Yeah, okay, nice. He gets oh, uh, the big seed. is uh, definitely an interesting uh, one. We haven't seen too much of it. Uh, many, mainly because, as you mentioned, with the uh, evil Twins and the Runix, uh, this card has fallen off in popularity, but it's essentially an honest <laughs> yeah. for the sprite decks and uh, for level twos in general. I think it's uh, pretty cute in a deck list uh, such as uh, Christos one, which is basically just sprite with and yeah, just a bunch of good cards as we saw, change of art, enemy controller, all these uh, one-offs which are really cool. But yeah, here we see another Marta coming down. Uh, and we know the last face count card is the Sprite Smashers. Where do you think he could wait uh, for activating the Smasher here? Like you just let your opponent play and then you wait for the next XYZ summon? Hey, it's, uh, it's definitely not an easy uh, solution, but uh, I don't know. I think uh, I'm still a little concerned on both of... Uh, the decisions involving the Mikaelis, uh, keeping it there and then not using it on the blue right away on the elf. So let's see. For now, essentially what happens is he's going to try and force out uh, this uh, pixie from activating. Yeah, he discards the pixies here yeah. on the elf. So Pixie is used here to get rid of the Mikaelis. Uh, yeah, essentially that's uh, <laughs> just the attack from Elf. Uh, it's pretty easy math, uh, but as you mentioned now, he will just uh, go straight forward into either a second copy of Mikaelis. Uh, let's see. Do you go for the Smashers? Because the problem is once uh, they have this many monsters on the field, if you activate the Smashers, then they can always just activate the yeah. Exo Sister. Yeah. So Smashers uh, is actually quite bad. That's why I also like to use it right there, right now. Yeah, that's, that's the main issue. Okay. Having a... Uh, I think... Looks like it's... Uh yeah, he's really considering his yeah. options uh, because he's thinking uh, if my opponent goes for the elf, uh, then I can just use any of my Exo Sisters. Uh, so I'm in a good spot at the moment. It's like the pressure is on my opponent to clear these monsters, but at the end of the day, yeah, it just passes turn back to Christus, I think. I, I don't mind this, uh, at the uh, as we mentioned, I mean, they each keep the effect yeah. and you can't really attack over them uh, at the moment, so... 
let's see. Uh, he needs to pick up uh, something. Uh, again, one of the monsters uh, would already be okay to try and push for and maybe go for uh, Zeus, I yeah. would say. That uh, seems nice. I like this from Jan, actually. Yeah. yeah. And we see Prosperity. Again, one of the cards, uh, I think one of my favorite cards of all time, or at least of the last years, uh, which, uh, of course, in the Runic deck, uh, and even in the Life Twin, it's kind of weird because they both draw cards, so you can't really use it efficiently, but it's such a strong option, even after siding, it yeah, gets much it's better. It's, yeah. it's insane, really. Yeah, you get to see more cards, and yeah. here... Okay, so we get to see another enemy controller. Talent is actually quite nice. And yeah, the rest <laughs> is pretty much the same option over and over, but... Um, I mean, here you can take a different lines. So either the jet, uh, the beaver, the enemy, they're all really good. Yeah, I think uh, beaver is a safe choice. And yeah, we see the nimble beaver, but effect veiler cannot be used, at yeah. least on that. Yeah. Uh, it would have been forced to use it on the elf. So good catch. Because of course, if elf wasn't good enough, uh, it also allows you not to target. And uh, he points too. Yeah, here he goes with for the sprite, and still with the protection on the elf. I, I think he really needs to find a way mm -hmm. not to deal with graveyards because um, Yan doesn't really have much going on at the moment. Uh, of course, uh, Exorcist has Marta, it's uh, 1600 attack. Mm -hmm. Would you have liked to, uh, like, maybe a Zeus play instead of this? Or do you think he doesn't need it? I will go for the Zeus, uh, honestly. Because uh, I can't quite tell if, like, Jan has only the Veiler in hand, by the way. Yeah, he has one card in hand yeah, left. It seems so. Yeah. So then you know it, and even if he does, you just have double Zeus, you know? And that could have been good, but at the moment, yeah. He's gonna force out the effect Veiler on the jet. Uh, gonna be left with a few options. Is he playing uh, like uh, on Imbimar? Let's check the other options. He yeah, and Jan uh, picks up his cards. Yeah, I think he has seen enough. Uh, surprisingly, on top of a really strong opening by Jan, it is Christos uh, in the end uh, who takes the game. And uh, yeah, well played, honestly. No, it was well played because uh, Jan started things off pretty well, I would say, with the yeah. most, uh, I think, uh, like powerful lineup with Marta, then going with Pax, and then he had both Vladis and the Returnia. Yeah, yeah th that opening, I think, uh, I mean, against Steel Elements, it's just game on the spot. Uh, against Sprite, most of the times it's game on the spot. And I think uh, this game proved why Christos is doing really well. Um, sure, the engine is quite consistent. You have cars like Nimble Beaver, which proved to be just even more ways to access the Sprite engine. But it is really the tech cars yep. that did it, the change of art, enemy controller, all of these cars really pushed him and allowed him to just uh, overcome uh, the opening from his opponent. Yeah, he was able to force the Magnifica with change of art. Yeah. And then I think the game changer was the enemy controller yeah, enemy there. Yeah, enemy was so strong yeah. here. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday. I think enemy controller is still as powerful as it was at the European Championship. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, the consistency of Christos is what is really paying off yeah. at the moment. And also some solid uh, game yeah. knowledge, I would say. <laughs> so uh, regardless now, it will be Janu who will try once again. But honestly, if I'm him, I'm pretty worried. Cause yeah, I will be worried. The opening was strong. Yeah, I mean, you saw that your opponent is not playing any other versions of sprites. Just just pure sprite, you know, yeah. consistent. He plays his cards and... Uh, not Runic at all, uh, not Evil Twin, and uh, he goes first, which is, of course, an advantage for Exorcist. Yeah. But after what we saw in Game 1, in like, which he had a very good hand... That was an above-average opening, yeah. so I don't know if you can hope to open that well again and again. Uh, also, his side deck, uh, I mean, uh, he has, like, Solemn Judgments, which usually come in going first, but outside of that, nothing too impressive. Uh, uh, what do you think, instead, uh, Christos will put in? for this matchup. Uh, Christos has uh, the evilly matched, which I think we have seen uh, really most good. of the players uh, siding in, and also the Pancrotops, which is very good. Yeah. And then uh, I think we also there's the, if he really wants to force out his opponent backwards as the Arpis Fed Duster, which is yeah, uh, sure. the That's most generic one. 
Uh, we will get to see here our players. Yeah, but regardless, uh, I think now the pressure is on Jan. Of course, they really don't want to lose this one because they are both on 7-2, so going 8-2. He's really close yeah. to getting it close. to the top cut. <laughs> Going 7-3 really slims down your chances. Uh, but our players are ready, so let's find out who will be the winner of game two. Here they are, so now, once again, Jan is gonna go first, uh, trying to open Marta, and he goes of his own prosperity. Yeah. That's, again, a great way to start things Best off. Best start, yeah. yeah. I mean, we both have memories of how good of a card and how much of an impact, uh, like, part of duality had back in the day. Okay, and we see the Ash Ooh. Blossom right away on the Prosperity. Interesting approach by Christos. Do you like it? And it pays <laughs> off. Wow. wow. Bold decision here by Christos to actually go Ooh. for it. But yeah, Jan shaking his head. Uh, really, really good Ash Blossom uh, paying and punishing yeah, this uh, is a the German player. A bold decision from Christos. Yeah. But we do see a response. Okay, interesting. Uh, this could be good enough uh, to grant another turn, and wow. it does. So we have actually a pretty sick game two and another prosperity off the top. Wow. Is it something that you yeah. would usually do, as Ash Blossom on a prosperity, very first turn of the game? It's uh, uh, probably something you wouldn't do against the other decks. Uh, I don't mind it here because you know like Exo Sisters wants to open Marta, that's it. Yeah. The rest of the openings, I think, are a little underwhelming. They are a combination of multiple cards. So this time, though, it will uh, pretty much pay off. Uh, let's see these top three cards. Uh, he gets one of the engine one. Uh, he's happy enough with this. Uh, and now, I think, after a little bit of a... Uh, I would say surprise with this game two opening, which could have been a quick one. Uh, Jan uh, skipping yeah. <laughs> things together, keeping his nerves also on check, uh, and you know, trying his best uh, to stay in this game. Yeah, things were getting scaring for him. Yeah, for a moment I just thought it was <laughs> yeah. over on the spot. I was like, okay, five minutes future match, and that's it. But no. Luckily for us, uh, we have a show on our end still, and it's Jan who will put uh, a lot of pressure. Is Christos actually playing uh, like Nibiru? Um, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I you don't need. <laughs> 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 nice timing for my question, I guess, but yeah. I just asked it, and we see it, uh, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, Jan is uh, not going to be happy with this. Huge wow. Nibiru. Yeah. This is, yeah. This might change the game. Uh, this was huge, yeah, honestly, yeah. And now he's back to Christoph. Yeah, and now I think we see once again uh, the same thing, uh, but it's tougher for his opponent to have a response. Uh, Pixie and Blue come down, uh, and uh, yeah, this is uh, so much pressure. Nibiru, such a strong card. Yeah, I mean, we'll just pack it though, I think, yeah, right? I yeah. mean, uh, after siding in... Uh, you, you might think your opponent might have the Nibiru, but in that situation, honestly, what there were... Yeah, I mean... Because you already know what your opponent is on. Exactly. Yeah. They just have a bunch of Sprite Monsters. Also, because the big giveaway was the normal summon of blue. Yeah. If they have another level 2, they never summon blue, so that already tells you they have at least two copies of blue in the end. And, yeah, you can't really afford to to go on uh, yeah a passive... Uh, gameplay and here we get to see the gigantic I believe uh, yeah and I don't think Jan has, a, has any card on his end right it's just uh, left a top deck 
pretty much. It seems as if uh, he has really is back against the wall. Can Christus figure this out? Uh, and also, what could the last set uh, be? Because uh, I think most of them would have been used already. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's like solemn. I think you're forced to use it before. Impermanence, I would guess, as well on the Gigantic, maybe. So, I don't know. And we do see, actually, the two copies of Swap Frog in the deck. So, maybe he would go for the Swap Frog. Might as well, to be fair. Uh, in this case, you could even just use it, uh, as we have seen, without the Ronin Toad, in, uh, which, uh, funny enough, it's actually better against Exo System. Yeah. Ronin <laughs> Toad was one of those cards which manipulate the graveyards. So... You don't want to be doing that against Exo, but yeah, we we will see the totally awesome uh, soon enough. Uh, oh yeah, he but the bell. he does okay. have the ghost spell, one of the few cards that could have stopped the Toad from coming down. Yeah, so we move to the battle phase, uh, we push some damage, uh, and uh, also, this is one of the big, uh, I guess, uh, sides of considering an extra sister deck is that most of the cards pay life points. So we have 19 minutes left, which is plenty of time, and this game is looking still as if it favors Christos. Wow, we are actually Ooh. seeing a uh, Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, Getting rid of the Pancratops. Interesting one. Uh, and this is actually pretty big from uh, his opponent, uh, which uh, wow. is reminded that he cannot activate yeah. it as Gigantic yeah, Sprite yeah. locked the level shoes. Uh, left at top deck, just sets one and pass the extend the handshake. Uh, and uh, it is Christos who convincingly takes this 2 and 0. Oh, moving on with an H2 record. Let's go back to us. What a match and what a way to start things off here at day two, round 10 of YCS Utrecht 2022. Honestly, we were here looking at a match between Jan and Christos, Exosister and Sprite. Uh, but what a duel it was. Uh, game one, we saw an impressive opening by Jan. I mean, Jan, uh, I think, started uh, with more than you usually expect from your deck because basically he had the Marta plus the, uh, the, the packs the Ash Bell and uh, the Ghost Bell and uh, two back yeah, row. So much. He had so much going on, but I think Christos had the sp most specific answers. Yeah. The change of art, I think, was huge. The change of honestly. art, the enemy yeah. controller. Yet one of those ends which uh, sometimes happen, you know, when you draw these ends and think uh, this might not be the best, but it is the best for what my opponent <laughs> had. And this was unfortunately the case for Jan. Uh, I still think that if we will go back to that game, there were a couple of decisions from both players involving the Mikaelis uh, yeah. where they could have gone differently. I am pretty sure that like Christos took an unnecessary risk uh, and he got rewarded by his opponent then taking an unnecessary yeah. risk. Uh, so uh, if they would have played it safer, which honestly is surprising to me because uh, maybe I could expect it from players being on X1. When you're at X2, I feel like you turn into this uh, yeah, cautious know, just, uh, <laughs> little animal which, you know, <laughs> tries to just uh, keep things uh, not too risky because you want to guarantee the top cut. Uh, but uh, in game two, the story was quite, uh, quite different. Uh, and uh, it was just Christos uh, dominating, I think, the game right away. Uh, the beginning was actually quite fun. Yeah. We thought that for a moment yeah. they both bricked or uh, didn't have yeah. much going on. Because essentially Jan <laughs> opens up Prosperity and Christus just thinks about it for like a couple of seconds and decides to go for Ash Blossom, yeah. uh, which can be risky. Yeah. But then his opponent passes back. Uh, he draws and apparently he opened just three or four sprites, uh, which means as soon as he normal summon one, the normal summon got rid of and play was back to Jan with a second prosperity and it looked as if he was getting rid of it and then I look at you and I'm like uh, 
Uh, is Christus oh, yeah. playing in Biro? <laughs> and at that time, uh, Christus uh, probably hears me yeah, and says, Yeah, I'm gonna answer that for you, Marcello. <laughs> and shows the Nibiru on camera, and just uh, uh, yeah, from that point on, it no, was, it was uh, just, no know, hope down. for yeah. his opponent. Uh, but still, congratulations to both for putting up uh, a hell of a good fight. Uh, uh, now, essentially, Jan is on a 7 3 record, yeah. but he started things off. Uh, I think at least the 6 0, oh, yeah. if not 7 0, oh, maybe. Should so the tiebreakers are probably should really be good. very high. Yeah. And uh, he still has plenty of good chances, but he's uh, forced to win the next two matches. Uh, on the other hand, Christos uh, with a net 2 record, uh, pretty much guaranteed that if he wins one, uh, or if he wins one and draws one. Essentially, he can go 1-1-1 one, one, one yeah. in, in general. So I think uh, he has really good chances uh, in advancing. Uh, and he's a really good player. We yeah. know him. We, we talked about how much of an experience he's got in this game. But regardless, as a final reminder, this was round 10. We still have two rounds of Swiss, 12 in total. And then we will move to the top 64 cut to find the first champion. But before we do that, thank you guys for watching. We have Ed ready with Christos to interview him about the match. So let's just go to them. Thank you, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Christos, who's just won the first round of today, round 10. First off, congratulations. You seemed pretty confident. That was quite a quick two-game victory. How does it feel? Yes, uh, with the uh, pure sprite that I play, we have a very good match against the uh, Exorcister deck because we don't use almost at all the graveyard against them, which their big uh, advantage, the graveyard effects, because if they play against their element, they have a great matchup. It's a really good one because they, they won the YCS in Niagara Falls and stuff, so it's clearly quite a strong deck, but you seemed confident, you didn't seem to have any problems, and probably a good matchup for you. Yes, it was very, it's a very good match for the sprite deck. And I'm uh, playing the pure version with hand traps, and many people today I'm playing and uh, in the event are playing Runic Sprite with no hand traps at all. Uh, but they don't like the play style of it because there is no battle phase, which annoys me, and the matches go on for very long. So going through the game, it started off quite strong for Jan. It looked like quite, you know, he's starting off with Martha and things that facilitates a lot of plays. But you were running multiple hand traps, like you said. You were pretty prepared to just sort of get things done. Opening with change of heart, a nice card to see coming out, especially now that it's off the Forbidden and Limited list. You got hit by the Ghost Bell. You dealt with the Mikhailis and stuff. And generally, you took that game one despite it being quite confident for that. So how did you keep your cool through all that and just work through game one? Yes, uh, I always try to keep my cool in general because if you are uh, losing your cool, then you can maybe place in the match. Uh, but it was a very hard game one. Pixie saved me, which I played from the battle. And then I uh, had the prosperity to find the nimble uh, monster that I summoned under the elf, and he couldn't veil it, so I could play. Excellent. And then game two, it started, you know, pretty confidently for you because you ashed, you Nibiru'd, and then that Phoenix came out just to sort of get rid of that back row, and then that was it. That was game. So that was pretty, again, calm, collected, just making sure you were making the right moves. What was going through your head in game two? Game two, I was uh, confident. Uh, because I had uh, Valer, Nibiru and Tash in my opening hand and, and plays with uh, the sprites, I didn't break. So I thought that uh, in the next turn when he told me that he added uh, with a spell another monster, he would go to five summons, so I let him add with I didn't Valer the first exes. And then he go, committed to five monsters and then Nibiru. And then from there it was history. <laughs> so you're now 9-1, is that right? No, I am 8-2. Uh, yeah. So what were the two losses against? Uh, one from uh, Runic Sprite that I bricked uh, in game three when I went first, unfortunately. And the one was from uh, Tier Element with hand traps, which uh, he had uh, almost every answer. So, <laughs> so there's only a couple more rounds of Swiss before that top cut. Are there any decks for the rest of the tournament that you're kind of nervous about going up against? Uh, I think... There is uh, the TR element with uh, Despia. It's a very good deck, good choice for the event. And uh, mostly this, mostly this one, yes. 
And well, you've dealt with it brilliantly. So congratulations again on your win. Guys, we have a couple more rounds of Swiss coming up. So don't go anywhere because we've got plenty more coverage coming right up.